Hello, today we are doing chapter 6, section 2. Our essential question is how can you write and evaluate an nth root of a number? All right, this is a lot of information that my guess is it's going to be a little bit confusing until you see some examples. Uh, we're, when we talk about roots, that's when you're going to see that square root symbol. And then for a square root, your n is 2. We don't typically write it down for a square root. But for a cube root, you put it like a little 3. That's called the index. And we're talking about different numbers here, so we're talking about the n. So the nth root of a number. So if it's odd, you're going to have 1 nth root. And you can write that also as an exponent 1 over n. If your n is even and number inside a, should have mentioned that, is greater than 0, you're going to have two roots. It's going to be plus or minus. If n is even and a is 0, your answer is 0. If n is even and a is less than 0, then you're not going to have any real nth roots. Again, I'd watch a couple of examples, go back and revisit this. So on this one, oops, let's go ahead and do this. So on the first one, n is 3. It's odd. And so negative 27 is going to be a cube root. I would probably go ahead and rewrite it as the cube root of negative 27. So you're looking for three numbers that when they multiply together is going to give you negative 27. That answer is negative 3. For b, you're going to have the fourth root of 16. Well, n is even and 16 is greater than 0, so you need to put a plus or minus in front of it. So you're looking for four numbers that multiply to give you 16. Well, those, there's actually going to be two of them because it's plus or minus. Uh, positive 2 and negative 2. So negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 gives you 16. Positive 2 times positive 2 times positive 2 times positive 2 also gives you 16. So on this one, you would be finding the cube root of negative 125. You can have negatives underneath there if that is odd. So I know the answer is right there, but you're looking for three numbers that when you multiply them together, give you negative 125. Negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5. Try number 2 on your own. Finding the 6th root of 64. And that would be plus or minus 2. All right. Try these three. On your own, let's see how you do. Actually, let's take that back. Let's go ahead and do them on your uh, together. Uh, the cube root of negative 8 is going to be negative 2. The negative cube root of 8 is also going to be negative 2. On C, they've written that as 16 times to the 1 fourth. That's really the fourth root of 16. That is going to be 2. And on the last one, there's no real number because you can't have a negative underneath that square root if your index is even. So you've already kind of been exposed to this a little bit, but you can rewrite a radical as a exponent and vice versa. So if I've got a to the m over n, that denominator is my index, that numerator is what it's being raised to the power of. 
So if I have 27 to the 2 thirds, the 3 is my index, the 2 is what it's being raised to the power of. I'm going to put a star by that. That is some good information to know. So let's go ahead and evaluate 16 to the 3 fourths. Well, I probably would have gone ahead and written that as the fourth root of 16 cubed because the fourth root of 16 is 2. Looks like they kind of skipped a little bit of a step, and that's fine. And then 2 to the third power is 8 on B. We've got 27 to the one-third times 4. And again, I probably would have gone straight to the cube root of 27, all raised to the fourth. There's a couple cube roots that you should automatically know, and this is one of them. The cube root of 27 is 3, so we have to figure out what 3 to the fourth is. That's going to be 81. All right. Now, you tried these four on your own. Let's see how you do for your answers. I think we've done that one already. That one should have been pretty easy. So on number four, I would have thought of that as the cube root of negative 64 squared, which would give me negative 4 squared, which is 16. For number 5, that would be the square root of 9 to the 5th, which would be 3 to the 5th, or 243. And for the last one, the fourth root of 256 cubed, which would be Four cubed, which is going to give me 64. Let's go ahead and do a word problem. We want to calculate the annual inflation rate in decimal form of an item that increases in value from P to F over a period of N years. So that P stands for present, the F stands for future, that's how I always remember it. And they give us the equation. Rate equals F over P raised to the 1 over N minus 1, where N is years, number of years. So they're giving us everything that we can plug in there. There's our basic equation. Plug in the future value, the present value. The number of years, 1 over 5, minus 1. I would use calculator work for this. Make sure for uh, rates, you have to move that decimal two places. So it's about 3.3%. All right, take a second, look at this, and answer this one to yourself. Choose one of those and really think about it. Hope you enjoyed today. Get ready for 6-3.